Hello everyone, welcome to Encryption, the tech tips and tutorial channel. This video is going to be about how to create an elastic block storage volume and attach it to an EC2 instance. Let me give you an overview of what we are going to learn in this video. We will learn to describe the EBS volume in AWS, create an EBS volume, attach the EBS volume to an EC2 instance, create a partition of the volume, Format the partition to a file system, mount the partition to a directory, and make the mount persistent. Let's begin the video lesson with an introduction to an EBS volume in brief. EBS stands for Elastic Block Storage. It is just like a hard disk or an SSD in our computer that stores operating system and other types of files. The main purpose of an Amazon EBS is that it offers storage volumes at the block level for use uh, with EC2 instances. We can attach as many volumes as we need and detach them when not in use. Moreover, uh, we can configure snapshots of the storage devices which can be used for backup and restore, increase the size, change the type of the volume and move it from one availability zone to another and also we can apply encryption on the storage volumes. With this brief introduction of an EBS volume, let's move on to the next topic that is creating an EBS volume. Log in to the AWS Management Console, click on the Services and click on the EC2. Here we can see the two instances that I created while creating the previous video which was about creating a new default VPC from scratch. You can find the link of the previous video in the description below or you can click on the link displayed on the top right corner of the video if you want to watch it. I am going to create and attach an additional EBS to this EC2 instance which has the name public-ec2-centOS. Let's check on which availability zone the EC2 instance is created because the EBS volume also should be created on the same availability zone so that it can be attached to the EC2 instance of that availability zone. We can see that the EC2 instance is created on the US-East-1B availability zone. Now on the left side bar of the AWS UI, scroll down a bit and under the elastic block storage, click on the volumes. Here we can see the two volumes of the two EC2 instances. If we check the first one and scroll towards the right, we can see it's created on the US-East-1B availability zone. Next, click on the Create Volume button. The volume type is General Purpose SSD or GP2. It's okay because it's under free tire scheme. Let's reduce the size of the volume to 10 GB because up to 30 GB of size of the GP2 SSD can be used for free under the free tire. Then let's change the availability to US-East-1B. Scrolling down a bit, we can see the volume can be encrypted for extra security. But I am not going to check the encrypt this volume box for now. Uh, but I am going to add the tag so that the volume can be identified with a name. Then I click on the create volume button. The EVS volume is successfully created. If we check the status of the volume, we can see it on the creating state. Wait about a minute and click on this reload button. Now we can see the volume is in available state. The next step of adding an EBS to an EC2 instance is to attach the EBS volume to the EC2 instance. For this, uh, click on the actions button and click on the attach volume. Here, click on the instance box to choose the EC2 instance on which you are going to attach the volume. In my case, it's public-ec2-centOS, which is now on a running state. The device name is uh, shown as slash dev slash stf, but the name can be changed to slash dev slash xbdf through slash dev slash xbdp by the AWS system. It's okay for us. So let's click on the attach volume button. 
As you can see, the volume is successfully attached to the EC2 instance. To verify, you can scroll towards the right and here under the attached instance section, uh, we can see which volume is attached to the which, to which EC2 instance. The next step of adding an EBS to the EC2 instance is to create a partition. Let's first access the EC2 instance via the SSS using a Linux shell. For this, uh, let's extract the EC2 login information first. Copy the given SSS login information from the example. Uh, open a Linux shell. In my case, I'm going to launch the Git Bash, which I installed by downloading from the internet free of cost. Git Bash is like a virtual terminal that provides a Linux shell. We can run any uh, valid Linux command here on the Git Bash. Next, you need to switch the current working directory to the directory on which you have stored your key pair file while creating the EC2 instance. About creating an EC2 instance and accessing it via a Linux shell, I have created a video lesson. The link of the video about creating an EC2 instance can be found on the description below or on the top right corner of the video. I am switching the directory to a G drive and then to the AWS slash AWS dash creates. Then executing the ls command, we can see the key pair file listed on the directory. Now paste the SSS login command here and hit enter. After some time, you will be logged onto the EC2 instance. Clearing the screen, let's switch the current user to the root user so that we will not have any restrictions to issue any command. Then if you type the lsblk command, you can see all the block devices attached on the system. Here we have the disk named xbda of 8GB of size. The device is created while creating the EC2 instance and a partition of the full size is created in the name xbda1 which is mounted on the slash or the root directory. By this we know that the operating system files are stored on this partition. We also have an additional disk named xbdf which is created and attached to the EC2 instance just before. To check the file system, mount find directory and UUID of all the disks, you can use hyphen FS options with the lsblk command. Here we don't see any of the information of the disk XBDA. This is a fresh disk now. To store something on this disk, we need to create a partition, format it with the file system and mount it to a directory. So first, let's create a mount find directory. Then let's create a partition. We can use the fdisk utility to create a new partition. If we do fdisk space iPhone L, we can see more information about all the disks. To begin with creating a partition, type fdisk and the device name, which in my case is slash dev slash xpdf. Type M and hit enter for help. Type N to create a new partition and hit enter. Type P for new partition and hit enter. Hit enter for the default partition number. Again hit enter for the default first sector. And again hit enter to allow creating a partition of the full size of the disk. Now type W and hit enter to write the changes. Now run the part probe command to inform the kernel about the partition changes. Next, uh, let's format the partition with the XFS file system. To verify, type lsblk space hyphen fs. We can see the partition is formatted to the XFS file system. Next, let's mount the slash dev slash xpdf1 partition to the directory slash temp slash images. To verify again lsblk space hyphen fs. Now anything we create or store on the slash tmp slash images directory is stored on the slash deb slash xbdf1. Next let's change the current directory to slash temp slash images. And then uh, let's create some txt files on it. Uh, 
Okay, this verifies that the disk or the partition can be used to store files on it. Finally, let's make the mount point persistent or permanent so that it will not be unmounted even when the system reboots. For this, we need to update the fstab file which is on the slash etc directory. Let's open the file with bi text editor. Go to the last of the last line. Press I to switch into the insert mode. Go to the next line and type the device name which is slash tape slash xbdf1. A space or tab mount point directory name. A space or tab file system name. A space or tab defaults. A space or tab and zero space zero. That's all we need to update here. Press the escape key to switch the text editor's command mode. Type colon x and hit enter to save and exit the file. Okay, this completes the entire process of adding an EBS to an EC2 instance. Last but not the least, to verify the persistent mount, let's unmount the disk from the mount point directory. Verify that the disk is unmounted using the lsblk space hyphen fs command. and type mount space hyphen a and hit enter. Now the disk should be mounted to the directory as specified on the slash etc slash fs tab file. To verify, again run the lsblk command with hyphen fs options. We can see the disk or the partition is mounted on the slash tmp slash images directory. If you want to destroy the disk or manipulate the disk uh, furthermore, now you should unmount the disk, remove the updates of the disk from the slash etc slash fstab file and detach the disk from the EC2 instance. Okay guys, that's all for this video. I hope the video was useful to you. Please subscribe my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching. See you on other videos. Till then, have a nice time. Goodbye.